Hey there. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to implement simple JSON web token authentication in a Node.js app. I'm going to be picking up where we left off in my last Node.js project, which is a Node.js API with Express and Serverless. If you'd like to code along with me, you can go to the GitHub repo in the description. Otherwise, any Node.js app follows the same pattern that I'm about to show you, so feel free to include this in your own project. JSON Web Token Authentication is a very widely accepted and widely used authentication practice. It's very simple yet powerful and protects your application API from unwanted access. So let's go ahead and see how we set it up. So in order to keep the master branch on this repo clean, I'll go ahead and check out a new branch. And I'll just call it off. So first I'm going to go ahead and open my source folder. And the authentication is going to act as a piece of middleware in our API. So I like to create a dedicated folder called middleware. And inside middleware, we'll go ahead and create a single file called auth.js. And if you're not familiar with middleware, it's just a piece of code that sits in between each API request and can alter the request, block it, add things to it, and so forth. So in this case, we want to check each incoming request and make sure it has the necessary authentication to continue. And if it does, we can allow it to proceed. Otherwise, we want to stop it. So now that we've gone ahead and created this file, we'll go ahead and install an NPM module. And this one is called JSON Web Token. <clears throat> and this package just abstracts the JSON Web Token authentication flow into a nice convenient package. So let's go ahead and install that. Once we've installed it, we'll go ahead and require it. Now we can create our middleware function. So I'll just call it check token. If I can spell it correctly. And every piece of middleware receives the same parameters. It receives the request, the incoming request, the response object, and this next function, which we'll see how to work with in a second here. <clears throat> now that we've created this function, there's a couple of things that we want to do inside here. So when an incoming request comes in with a JSON web token, it is of the format bearer and then the token itself. What we want is just this piece, the token itself. We don't care about the bearer. So to start, let's go ahead and create a variable called token. And what we're gonna do is extract request.headers and if this property is present x access token or requests.headers.authorization this is where the json web token will be sitting either in the headers as x access token or request.headers.authorization if in your case it's sitting in a different place for your clients that are sending the requests, you can set it here, but this is typically where we'll find it. Next, we'll make a check. We'll say, if the token starts with bearer, then we know it's valid. Notice I put a space here because there is a space. We know it's valid and we can say the token is equal to token slice. And we want to slice the first seven characters up to the token length. So what this is going to do is it's going to take away the bearer and then the space. So all that we're left with is the token itself. So next, let's go ahead and check to see at this point if we actually have a valid token. So if we don't have a valid token, that is, it wasn't in the request header, then we know we can return a response that the user is not authorized, authorized at this point. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll return res.status and we'll set a status code of 401, which is unauthorized. And in the JSON body, 
this can really be anything you want. Here, I'll create a body with a success of false and a message of off token is not supplied. But feel free to use any kind of body you want here. Next, so this is where we're actually gonna go ahead and check the authenticity of the token. So if someone just sends bearer and then some strings or text, we wanna make sure that this is actually the token that we've set up in the application. So to do this, we can make use of the JSON web token package. And we're gonna go ahead and call verify. And verify takes three parameters. First of all, it's gonna take the token itself, one that we've extracted from the headers. Next, this is important. So it's gonna take an actual JSON web token secret value. And this is a value that both we provide here to check the authenticity of the token, but we've also used it to form the token itself. That is valid clients that are sending us the token have used it to create the token. So this is where JSON web token library actually checks to see, oh, okay, is the secret that the token includes the same as the one that we expect, right? So in order to do this, we could hard code a secret here, right? This is a secret, but it's bad practice to hard code secrets in your app. So in order to fix this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a .m file. And this .m file is something you normally wouldn't commit in Git. It would be something that would just be stored on your machine. You could load it through AWS or some other provider that injects dependencies. But in this case, in my environment file, I'm gonna go ahead and create a key value pair. And the key is gonna be JWT secret and we can set it to really whatever we want. You can use a password generator, but this is gonna be the same secret that authenticated clients will send and the one that we're gonna test against. So, great. Now we can use process.m.jwt secret. Now there's one more thing we actually have to do to actually inject this in our JavaScript file. And to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and install another dependency called .env. And all .env is is a dependency that allows you to create these .env files and then it injects the environment variables you define. So we'll go ahead and require .env and we'll call .config on it to load the .env file. So you can see here, it loads .env file into process.env. So now our secret here is being loaded securely into our application. The last parameter that verify takes is a callback function and it takes two parameters. One is an error object in case an error occurs when decoding. And the second one is the actual decoded token. So now inside of here, let's go ahead and check to see if there was an error. We're gonna go ahead and return status similar to above of 401, and we'll throw a similar object in here, except this time the message. I'll say token is not valid. Okay, now lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the decoded token to the request so that in other parts of the API, if we need access to this decoded token, it's gonna to be attached to the request already. And this would be helpful because sometimes you actually include information on the token like a user ID, for example. This would now be attached in a decoded format so you could use it in the API in other spots. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and return next. All middleware functions have to call this next function to be able to proceed. So finally here, let's go ahead and just export it. Check token. So now I'm gonna go ahead back into my index.js and here we can actually set up the middleware that we just created. 
So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and have to import it. So I'll import it here. Check token, require middleware off. And all we have to do to tell Express to use this function is call rather intuitively app.use check token. So this is great. Now the application is going to run the check token function. And one thing I just noticed here is we actually want to put this middleware above any routes that we use because if it comes after, these routes won't be protected against because the middleware runs in the order we define it. So check token will run. If the user is authenticated, then any subsequent routes will run. So check token will run. We'll get the request header. We'll make sure we have a header and then we'll verify that the header exists. So let's go ahead and save it. Now, in order to actually test out our authentication flow, we're gonna have to get a signed token to use our application. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate route. And this one we'll call, create a folder called login. And I will create a file called routes.js. And we'll follow a similar pattern here as we did with the user. In fact, I'll actually just copy what we have here, put it in. Okay, so this route would represent, in a typical app, the route that the user would hit with their login credentials. If the credentials were valid, we'd send them a auth token, a signed auth token they could use to do other things in our API, like for example, call the user routes and so forth. In this example though, we'll just give a signed token for free. That is, we won't actually check the credentials. That could be a good exercise that you could implement. So here, we'll go ahead and first require signed token from utils make sure we go up a directory utils sign token and instead of passing back an empty object here we'll call sign token and we're going to pass in request.body.userid so we're going to expect that the request has a user id attached to it if we save this we can now go to our index.js and let's go ahead and add this route above our check token so it doesn't require authentication to use that because we don't want to require authentication for a route that actually gives us the signed token that we need to succeed in this method. So to do that, I'll go ahead and add an import here and we'll call this login route. Okay, and we'll go up to login routes. And importantly, this goes above the check token middleware because this is an unauthenticated route. And any calls to slash login will provide login routes. Great, so let's save this. And there's one more thing with our authentication function. If we go into middleware off, one more thing I want to add is I just want to add a check to make sure the token exists before we check the starts with. So we'll go ahead and do this if the token exists and it starts with. If it doesn't exist, then we'll return early here. There's actually a couple of things we have to do before we can test our work. So if you go into login routes, make sure that you're wrapping the sign token import in with curly braces because we want to destructure it here. So just add curly braces here. Next, we can actually go ahead and move our .env calls in both of these places, sign token and off. Let's delete it from here. And we actually only need to provide it once inside of our index.js, because this is the earliest place our, our application loads. So let's go ahead and save. And lastly, we actually have to move, if you're following along with my project structure, you have to move the .env file into the source directory. It should be in the root directory. So if you move this, 
You'll, not, you'll notice I actually also added this line here, app.listen at port 3000. This is just so we can test our API out, API out locally instead of using AWS Lambda. So with that being done, we should be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and open a new terminal window. I'm gonna cd into source, and I'm gonna start my API using nodemon. And it looks like I already have it running. So we should be all set to go ahead and test this out. Now I'm inside of Postman. I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab up. I'll paste the URL, so for localhost, it's at 3000 in default for Express. And in order to get a token, we're going to use the route that we set up, slash login, get. And remember, if you remember correctly, we have a body too that passes in a user ID. So we'll attach a user ID here. And I'll just say 123. Set this to JSON. And let's send this request. And you can see we're getting back a signed JSON web token here. And now if you go to jwt.io, you can see the URL here, jwt.io, and you scroll down to the debugger. You can actually paste this JSON web token in to the debugger here, and you can see some information. And importantly, here's the payload that we added earlier. So you can see the ID we added here and the issued app. So this is great. We can see that our information is properly being passed. Now back in Postman, I want to go ahead and call the slash user route. And let's just pass nobody in for now. If we send a request here, we can see we're getting a message that we'd expect saying the auth token is not supplied because we are checking that an auth token is in the header and it's not. So what we can do is go to authorization, go to bearer token, and let's paste in the token that we added earlier. Now, if we send the request, we can see it's coming back as a 200 because we have successfully authenticated the request. So this has just been a short tutorial on how to work JSON web tokens on your local host in a Node-Mon environment or Node.js environment. I plan on doing another video on how to incorporate this into an AWS setup. So if you'd like to see that in the future or any other kind of video, please let me know. And thanks for watching.